Okay, we made it. It's uh, 8 o'clock exactly. There's Kay finding her fossils. <laughs> and uh, so actually, I did find one since I got out of the car. Let's see here. Well, I guess she put it in her bucket. Anyway, it had a, an impression of a shell in it. Seashell, so. And this area, it's right off of the 10, but most people don't know about it. You have to come down a long dirt road to get to it. But it's right next to, right over there is where there used to be a uh, moonstone mine, they called it. And so they did a lot of digging there. Maybe that dug up some of the fossils. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to look around. You can kind of get an idea what kind of rocks there are around here. First thing about this area is people decide to come out here and dump all their old refrigerators and trash. They really make a mess in the area. This is just a few miles before Blythe. But Kay said she's not finding the usual kind she likes over here. So we're going to go back over to the uh, where the Moonstone mine is and see if, what we can find over there. I'm down in a creek bed right here. Dry creek bed, a lot of different types of rocks. All smoothed. So we're going to be here for two days, I guess. And then uh, sometime in the near future, I'm going to have an adventure with uh, Jeff Williams. You know, jeffwilliams.com. The guy said, well, come on, let's go. He's got the Slim, the skeleton with him. Anyway, he's going to take, take us on uh, one of his good claims to do some dry washing. Right now, he says he's making some videos. Whenever he gets done with that, then he has a meet and greet thing at a store so he once he gets all that out of the way he's gonna said he'll take us out to a good place so, so that'll be interesting well Kay seems to be picking up quite a bit like I say she has an eye for this stuff it's uh, mostly here we find uh, sea sea fossils seashells embedded in stone things like that sometimes you can see some little critters embedded from the ocean. She's trying to make some sun tea on the hood of my car here. And uh, like I say, right, you can see that tower over there. Or in between here and that tower is the 10. So we're just right on the other side of the 10. I think you go down, you turn off is uh, Mesa Verde, I believe it's called. Mesa Verde, something like that. Anyway, right after these towers, that's the next exit. You turn right, and you just follow the road till it dead ends, and you go through little older residential places. At dead ends, you turn right, and you come to where it says pavement ends, and there's like three different roads you can go on. Just stick to the one going straight ahead, and you just come down. I don't know, maybe it's a mile or so. Maybe I'll measure it on the way out. You'll see these mounds on the right and all these old tires. And right on the other side of that mound is where the main part of the uh, Moonstone Mine was. And so this is all the tailings from it. And uh, this is where you seem to find the fossils. Um, I don't know that much about Moonstones, but I believe, from what I understand, they're pretty much, they're kind of clear stones. And then inside of them, you'll see what appears to be like the moon. So you'll see something kind of white like the moon in them. And uh, I don't know if you just find them by themselves or they're conglomerate or what it is, but uh, I guess they use it for jewelry. So years ago, they had a mine here for that. I've never actually found any moonstones. I think they cleaned it out pretty good. Although Kay said she found a piece that looks like it 
could possibly have moonstone in it. Anyway, later on I'll try to get better directions because I know uh, Jaime Ortega sent me a message and he said this sounds like the kind of thing his kids might like to do. So we're doing this today, or maybe part of the day, and then we'll go over and uh, go to a different area and get the Chalcedony. Now I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's either some say Chalcedony, some say Chalcedony. It sort of looks like a fire agate. And some of it does sort of have some fire to it. It's not actually where we get it. It's close to a fire agate mine, which we went to a few years ago. We did pretty good. It's one of those pay to dig. It was hardly anything like 20, 25 bucks. If the guy's not there, he just, you know, you leave the money in a little can and uh, uh, everybody's pretty trusting out there. We're not going there though. That's pretty good. Found a knife here, right here in the dirt. So I got something. Okay, so here, this has something to do with the old mine here. They had something on top of it. One time, it goes up there. But, uh, <clears throat> Again, I'm not an expert on moonstone, but uh, as far as finding any pieces of it here, you think you would, but I don't see anything that looks like the description I have of it. So either they were super thorough, or I don't know what I'm looking for. you to figure out where this place is when you're coming down the 10 towards Blythe as soon as you see that tower up there the little mountain with a tower that'll be on your left then just look toward your right and you'll see the tailing piles over here see there's a freeway there with the trucks just look over this way and you'll see the tailing piles and that'll give you an idea what it looks like so when you go down that way to the exit down there so there's a Valero gas station on the left and another station of some type. Anyway, that's where you turn right, go down there, like I said, and then turn right again when you get to the end of the road, and you end up here eventually. There's a piece of carnelian there. Got my grabber this time. Sometimes it's more trouble than it's worth. But anyway, let's see if I can pick it up. $1.99 special from Harbor Freight. Then I got a coupon, I got one free. That's about all you need to do this. My wife says I'm better at finding the carnelian, so I'm going to look for that. And she's going to look for the fossils. Yeah, I'm looking for them too, but I, I just don't have the eye for them. So. I found one so far. She's probably got a bucket full.
Yeah, we found out about this place years ago. We were over at, uh, oh, where is it? Way off that way. I think it's called Palo Verde. We, uh, we're at, I think it's, what is it called? Bob's Rock Shop, I believe. Pretty interesting place. And we were talking to him about fossils, and he uh, described this area. And so we gave it a shot, see if we could find it, and we did. And so we come out here usually once a year. And then I also go down um, Wiley's Well Road. That would be back that way, going back towards, you know, Los Angeles. That's back that way, just a couple miles. There's a prison there, and going past all that on a dirt road is where we'll find the uh, uh, Chalcedony. And why I get that is uh, I sell... Uh, gold pay dirt and concentrates and then gem mine tailings and um, also I put in some chalcedony people seem to like that so so I'll go over here about once a year and get a, try to fill up some buckets keep me going for a while with that it's usually good if you can come right after it rain because you'll see some fresh stuff that got washed up Pretty, pretty high tailing piles here. I wish I did have a moonstone expert with me here. I could be walking over moonstones for all I know. But I don't see anything that looks like the description I've been given. Which I'm not even sure if that was an accurate description. So. Oh well, just have some fun. Looking for about an hour now, so far as you can see in my bucket, I haven't found much. Pretty much just some interesting rocks. Some little fossils in it. Some chameleon and just some interesting rocks and a knife, of course. Well, the way things go for me, though, there's probably some serial killer threw this out here. I'll have it in my pocket, get pulled over, and I'll have some DNA on it. And uh, they'll lock me up for life. Let's hope not. Okay, I'm going to go over and see what Kay's getting. She probably has a bucket full by now. That's interesting. Almost looks like petrified wood. Hmm. Could be. Looks like it. Huh. Yep. There's some carnelian, I think. Oh, where'd it go? Right there. <coughs> then they're looking down at the ground right where I found that carnelian. What do I see? There's a fossil. Right there. See the can you see the seashell imprints? Maybe that's a trick for me since I'm tall. I need to get down closer to the ground to see these things possibly. Kay's short. She's already close to the ground so she can spot them. Anyway, that's going to be my excuse. I'm too tall. Okay, Kay has a shell impression. Okay. Anything else interesting? actually a huge piece of coral. So she found some with coral on it. There's seed impressions of seeds. Hmm. Okay. I don't know where my critter rock is. Oh, I could have dumped it in the other bucket already. Okay. So I found a little. Kay said she... I found a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 1237 and we're heading for Fire Agate Land.
mostly it's chalcedony, chalcedony, excuse me, over there, but there is fire agate and it's fun to find. So here's what the road looks like. Here's the freeway over there. It's about 1.3 miles on the dirt road, so we're coming back to the pavement again. Going to this little residential area. Mesa Verde. What did you say? Mesa Verde. Mesa Verde. So as we're coming out, we get to the stop sign here, and we'll turn left onto Mesa Drive get back to the freeway to the 10 just right up there and if they need something to drink or eat there's a little shop right on the other side of the freeway that you drove over in the car okay see the little uh, so now we're on the 10 west we're going to go down to Wiley's well road it's not too far and we'll show you where we go from there. It's nine and a half miles once you get on Wiley's Well Road. You went, when you go down to the, to the you, go, you drive on the pavement to the state prison, then you keep going straight onto the dirt road, and then from that point, it's 9.5 miles. Again, on, from the freeway, here's the towers and all that. Well, now you can't see them, but anyway. They're over there on the other side of this hill. And if you look over this way, I think you can see the mounds. There they are. So that's where it is. There's just no way to get from here to there. You gotta go around. There's the tower. So we're getting up to Wiley's Well, one more mile. So it's about, from the other road to this, to Wiley's Wells, about 11 miles. So if you're coming from LA and you're going to both places, probably you'll want to go to this place first so you don't waste a bunch of gas backtracking. Or you could go here on your way home, anyway. A lot of times we do one day at the fossil beds and then the second day we go down to um, the, G the fire agate place. But if you continue on past the fire agate place, there's also the Hauser Geo beds. And we've only been there once, but we had a good time. So that's another thing that you can do. And rent is cheap. Hotels are cheap in Blythe. So. so there's a rest stop right here. And we're going to go towards the state prison, which is three miles to the left. I might drop Kay off at the gate of the prison for her bad ways. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so here's the prison area over here to the right. So you don't want to turn that way. You get to the stop sign, you go straight onto this dirt road over here. And don't pick up hitchhikers. Yeah, toward Wiley Well. We're going to be going past that campground. So Wiley Well is about six miles. As Kay mentioned, we'd probably end up going nine or ten miles. The, you know when you get there because there's a little teeny tiny sign on the left hand side that says Opal Hill Mine. And it used to say Opal Hill Mine, now you can just barely see the O. But all it is is a piece of wood with one end cut to a point pointing up the road. And it, and it says Opal Hill Mine, or it used to. So this road should be, you know, it's bumpy, washboardy, but it's okay. Don't come out this way when it rains. Uh, Tom Massey tried to do that. And he had to wait for a flash flood to go by. So we just passed Wiley's Well at six miles. So it's still on the dirt road. Mountains off in the distance. 
that's where the Opal Hill Mine is, is up in those mountains. Yeah, the Opal Hill Mine somewhere over there. As you can see, as soon as you step out of the truck, the Jeep, there's some peas here. There's some peas. There's a little piece, there's a piece there. It's just everywhere. Some better than others. We kind of like it. It's more of the uh, darker nodules on it. This kind of lighter one there. Peace. So here's what I got in about five minutes, and that's passing over a lot of stuff that I didn't really want. So, so it doesn't take too long to get a bunch. Normally when you're in the wider gravels like this, you're not going to see hardly any, if any, at all. But as soon as uh, you start getting back into the darker stuff again, that's where you'll start seeing it. So we're getting to the darker stuff right here. Let's see if we have anything here. And there's a piece right there. Pretty good flow of it right here. So you can see it all there. Keep walking this way, straight line. You see it all. Some more, more, more. There's more. It just keeps going. There's a kind I like. It's, it's small, but see the dark nodules on there. Nice piece. Every once in a while when I'm out here, I'll find a really big piece, but uh, it's pretty rare to find those. So far, I haven't found a gigantic piece yet, but it all adds up. As you can see, way down there is the Jeep, so I've walked quite a ways from the Jeep. Now, I could get tons of stuff just staying close to the Jeep, but I'm kind of a wanderer and explorer so I got to keep moving. So here's about a half hour's worth of picking them up. Gotta keep going. See, it's still all over the place.
K's way over there by the Jeep. So I'll start heading that way. Out of here, we got a whole five gallon bucket full, so that's pretty good. So we're on our way. The horizon, show the sun going slowly. I have a director over here, you probably heard her. <laughs> so, from where the pavement ends, of course, we're leaving, but if we're going back that way, from where the pavement ends, the dirt road is 8.8 .8 miles and then you turn left on Opal Hill Road and you go one tenth of a mile and pull over and you'll see the stuff on the left. Here's the sunset. Nice beautiful sunset. If you can see it, do you see that pattern right where my finger is? That's mostly what we find. We find either shell patterns or coral patterns. And it's usually in these rocks <coughs> that kind of, my wife Kay describes it as, it looks like they exploded. Those seem to be the kind that have it. As you can see, there's no shortage of rocks here. Just got to find the right kind. Nope. fossils we've gotten so far the whole five gallon bucket and then a few in this bucket in case still has some over there so that's that then here and here here's our bucket full of uh, uh, chalcedony just about filled up all the way a five gallon bucket and we're probably gonna go get some more of that today your shell So down in here, I don't know if you can see the screw sides going into the hole, and then there's the fossil in the hole, called a crinoid. Here's this one, it looks like a nail stuck in there, or a screw. There's one K found. A snail, all crystallized. Crystallized snail. So we have almost another full bucket of uh, fossils here. 
We are going back to our other spot to get the Chalcedony. We're approaching the prison. It would be to your right. And we want to go straight towards Wiley's Well. Wiley's Well is six miles, and where we're going is about three miles past Wiley's Well. we went to a year or two ago if I can find it again it was kind of a small area but it seems like I don't quite remember it seemed like they were there were bigger ones there but I don't know maybe they're all gone anyway we're heading off in that direction it might be a mile and a half up I don't recall we'll just have to hopefully I can remember what it looks like when we get there Yeah. <laughs> I would say this stuff. Well, now I don't know. It's a nice globular piece. You ever feel like you're behind the eight ball? I found this stuck down in this dirt here. It has a stem on it, so it must be a shifter from an old car or something. Looks like they used to have those in the old days. I found a new area that I think is the best area yet. I don't know if you can see. There's stuff there. Big piece there, bunch of pieces there, nice one there. It's all over the place here. All kinds of little pieces, right? Well, here's the calcedony we got today, just about a full bucket again. So it looks real good.